What would you say if I told you you could achieve the Kim Kardashian aesthetic without breaking the bank? I know you probably don't believe me, but in today's video, we're gonna chat about nine interior design tips you can learn from Kim Kardashian's home that obviously look luxe and expensive and so good that you can do affordably. So I know, I know, I just hyped it up a bunch, so let's get into today's video. Now, if you're not familiar with Kim Kardashian's home, that's okay. Let me tell you a little bit about it first. It's very, very minimal. It almost looks like a monastery, and I know that the taste isn't for everyone. Personally, it is, it is my cup of tea, and as a tea drinker, that is quite the compliment. But I love Kim Kardashian's home. It's very simple, it's very minimal. So if you're here on this channel, I think you might like it a little bit, but if you like maximalism, please don't watch this video because you're just going to be offended every single second. But let's jump into it. So the very first interior design takeaway from Kim Kardashian is to look to your wardrobe for inspiration. Now, if you only wear athleisure, not you, <laughs> not you, so skip this one. But in general, look to your fashion sense for inspiration because the colors and textures that we enjoy in fashion seems to be very similar to what we would enjoy in our homes. So Kim Kardashian, for example, she wears a lot of beige and white and gray and black and her house is quite literally exclusively gray with some white, a little bit of black um, and beige, right? Right? So all the colors she likes to wear, they also appear in her home. And you guys are going to say, oh, it's branding. Sure, it very well may be, but stop throwing Queen Kim Kardashian under the bus. But she also enjoys it. Why would she make her house look one way and dress one way and it be inconsistent with what she actually enjoys? That makes absolutely no sense. So look to your fashion. So for me, for example, I love neutral spaces. And when I go to the store, you have never, ever seen me in something that was blue. I wore a blue sweater on Instagram the other day and I got so many DMs saying like, are you, are you, are you, okay? are you okay? Like, did someone force you to do this? I like to wear beige, white, black, and a little bit of gray. And my house is beige, white, and black, right? So look to your wardrobe for inspiration. It'll tell you a whole lot about what your home should look like. Sure, sometimes people dress one way because of the type of job that they have and their home looks very differently, but honestly, that doesn't happen very often. So definitely, definitely look to your wardrobe when you're lacking inspiration for what you wanna to do to your home. So one of the major qualms with minimalist spaces and modern spaces is that they're too devoid of color. People feel like they can't live in those spaces. And something that Kim Kardashian has done that you can do in your own home is you could make your public spaces, your living room, your dining room, the places where you entertain, you could make those cohesive. But when it comes to your kids' rooms, your bedrooms, the rooms that are really for the family where someone might actually want some color, add some color there. So for example, Kim Kardashian, she has color in the playroom because obviously they're toys. She doesn't make her kids play with like Montessori style toys so they have colorful tools they have toys they have a two-story playroom their playroom is the size of my entire house so that's really nice for them and they have colorful rooms so one room is pink another one is purple another one is blue and another one is dinosaurs I personally would want to stay in the dinosaur room but see she lets her kids experiment with color you don't have to completely cut out color in your space same thing here. We don't have color anywhere except for in the artwork. The artwork is where we like to have fun. We also have more color in our bedrooms as opposed to in our public rooms. You just want the public spaces to look more cohesive and then you can experiment more in other places. I think sometimes people think that if you have a design style or if you have a color palette, it has to be exactly the same throughout the home. And that just isn't true. You should actually have repetition throughout your home, of course. So repetition of shapes and colors and lines, things like that. But it doesn't have to look this, you know, identical to a T. It can look slightly different. So maybe Kim Kardashian, you know, in her playroom, for example, obviously she has colors from the toys, but she has the same arches that she has um, in other parts of the home. So she creates cohesion in that way, even though there's color in other spaces. Same thing goes for the kids' rooms. They still have color, but they have the same shapes um, and textures that you find elsewhere in the home so the home still feels cohesive even though it's kind of breaking from the already established color scheme. Since Kim's divorce from Kanye, you will see that she's added a lot of art to her home. And I don't really know the reason for this. Maybe she just enjoys art. And she also has a ton of art from her daughter, Northwest, who is a phenomenal artist, by the way. Um, if she's selling, I'm buying, but I don't think I can afford it. But it really looks fantastic. But she's added a lot of art to her home. So two key takeaways I want you to, you know, hone in on. Um, one, art is a great way to tie in a space. Of course, again, her space is very much so white and beige and gray. So her art is the exact same color 
colors is what you have going on on everywhere else in the room but it has a little bit more texture it has some shape to it um, it's very reminiscent of kind of like the the linen art that we've seen become really popular the textured kind of spackle wall art that we've seen become really popular she's adding a ton of texture to her already textured walls because her walls are plastered and it just adds a lot of dimension even though Kim Kardashian's artwork falls within her color scheme it's still very distinctive in shape and in texture and it really makes a statement you will walk into any room and immediately notice it so art is a great way to tie in the colors but also add something new it adds new shapes it adds new textures if she put color in it it would add a new color and it still wouldn't be out of place when you look at other celebrity homes art is a really really great way again to tie in a space or to add a pop of color where color otherwise doesn't make sense you will probably notice in a lot of celebrity homes, it almost looks kind of like an art gallery. And then everything else is kind of simple unless they're leaning into those design trends. And that's what you can do as well. Art can be the place where you have tons of color, tons of boldness, but everything else is a little bit more simple because you don't have to buy really, really over the top furniture, right? Because when you buy more simple furniture, it's evergreen, which means it's going to be popular for a long time. It's going to be in fashion for a long time. Whereas artwork, it's easier to swap out and it can kind of dictate what your style really relates to people. Now, if you've ever seen any picture of Kim Kardashian's house, you would probably say she's allergic to color. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. Obviously, you can tell that I do love Kim Kardashian's house, but I think that she does a great job of making the house look interesting without a ton of color. I'm not saying don't use any color at all, but I want to tell you how you can get the look. So what she does is she uses a lot of texture and she uses very, very interesting lines to make the space visually interesting. So she has plaster on her walls. So plastered walls have become really popular. Lime wash walls have become really popular. Um, having some texture on your walls make them interesting because every piece of wall looks different right so you're gonna have a different experience every time you walk down that hallway every time you look at that wall even though there's not a fun paint color or anything like that you will also notice that she has a ton of arches and she has intersecting arches so it reminds you of a church it, it reminds you of somewhere very very grand and again if you follow one line you're gonna get a very different experience that time than another line it's just very interesting it's almost kind of like a labyrinth on on the sea healing in a type of way. It's very, very interesting and it's very intentional. And you will notice that when you are in these celebrity homes, it's about intentional design. They didn't just throw stuff up there. I'm sure they calculated those angles and a lot of thought into it, but that adds detail without having to add color because color isn't the only way to make a space look interesting. The arches also just add a lot of hominess. I think that when people do really, really minimalist design, people often find that it's very sterile and sure her house is still sterile to a degree but the the arches really soften it up and make it a little bit more inviting um, and it also ages it a little bit it gives you kind of like that olden time feel without having to have really 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 antiqued furniture and furthermore while Kim again doesn't have too much color she still has the same architectural details that you would see in other spaces so when you look in their main living room where they have their large TV which we're gonna chat about in a little bit she still has beams the beams are just plastered and they're the same material as the rest of the the home but she still has those architectural details that make you want to look up and stop and stare so I have exposed beams like that is a key architectural feature and she has that as well and you might not notice it on your first glance up but she has all of those things she has very very intentionally paced stairs and the wall openings are very very uh, intentionally made I'm saying intentional over and over again because there was a lot of thought behind this to make this space look interesting even though it's simple next takeaway from Kim Kardashian's house that you need to know about is that you need to look to the evergreen design style so again evergreen means something that is always always in style always in fashion if you ever struggle with the term just think about evergreen trees right so Kim Kardashian's style has been the same since she has lived in this house in the Hidden Hills, and it's been a number of years. And you'll notice that a lot of other homes, normal people's homes, celebrity homes, influencer homes, they've all really changed, right? But I think Kim did a really phenomenal job at finding a design style that has always been popular and will continue to be popular. Does everyone like it? Of course not. Um, is it everyone's cup of tea? Of course not. But is it a style that doesn't feel outdated? It doesn't feel like Kim needs to change her house anytime soon. And that's what it's all about. I think we get so sucked up into these design trends and we marry them but then the next year it's totally out everyone's like ragging on you for having that style and you're like well what am I supposed to do I spent all this money what do you want me to do with all of this stuff so 
I don't think she experiences any FOMO. Of course not, because she's Kim Kardashian and she could buy whatever, but she also chose a design style that is going to continue to be popular. Minimalism has been popular for years. It doesn't go in and out of style. There are tons of minimalists and there will continue to be tons of minimalists, especially since if you have a busy life, you don't want a lot of things, you want to be more sustainable, minimalism makes a lot, a lot of sense. Do some research when you're finding a design style. Find the ones that have been popular for years to come or really come back in style very, very frequently and opt for that one. Don't fall for these trends that are very, very temporary. You're gonna save yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, and you're gonna save yourself a lot of feeling like you're missing out because that feeling is almost equally as important with the time and money as well because you never wanna feel like your house doesn't feel right compared to other people because at the end of the day, we all compare ourselves to other people and if you say you don't, you just lie to yourself. So really take that away. Away from Cam. The next takeaway from Kim Kardashian is that you can have televisions in your home. And you're like, what? TVs are finally fashionable? I don't know that I'd say that they're fashionable or trendy, but you can have TVs, but it's all about that television placement. So you know, this is not relatable for everyone, but she has a TV that takes up an entire wall. And when it's off, it just looks like a nice black accent wall. So of course you're not gonna do that, but she's hidden the TV well. She hid the TV within her design, and that's what you need to do. Now, I'm not telling you to get a TV that comes up out of the floor. Who has money to pay for that, right? Nobody has money to pay for that, but be intentional with the placement. Hide it in a wall, hide it in a bookcase, put it at an angle where when you first walk into a room, you don't initially see it. Get a TV that doubles as artwork, right? So that it seems very, very simple. Paint the wall the same color as the TV so that the TV blends in when it's turned off. You can have televisions, you just need to make sure that they're very, very understated. So, you know, hide your Xbox in the wall or in a hidden niche or something like that. Don't leave it on display with all of those cords. You have to have a lot of thought in where you place your TV, but once you do that, it is very, very feasible to have one. Now, of course, we haven't seen every inch of Kim Kardashian's home, but you will notice as you kind of are guided through the halls, through the kitchen and places like that, that Kim Kardashian uses nature as a part of her design. And that's something I want you to start doing. And I don't just mean bringing plants inside. Of course, she has plants on her countertops, but she actually has really, really large windows and she's using her windows as part of her design. Not every single window in her home has curtains and not every window in your home has to have curtains. It's okay to actually have some of that light shine in and have those plants on display. Those plants can be a part of your design, right? So of course in a room, if you have a huge window and there's no curtain on it, maybe you don't need tons of artwork on the wall because you're playing off of that green and that bark and all that stuff that you're seeing outside and you're using that as part of your decor. You can even center your decor around that window. I think we just get caught up with the idea that we have to have window coverings and we don't. Of course, if you live in a place where you're just in the abyss of forest, you don't have to have anything at all. If you're in a more public space and you're worried about about that get protective film on your window so that's actually what we have you cannot see inside our windows you can only see outside so that we can really enjoy the arch windows and of course we do have um, extra window coverings for extra privacy but you don't always need that so use those windows as a part of your decor instead of covering them up because nature and your gardens and all those things that you're working on outside can really really have a huge impact on what you're doing inside also if you're not a horticulturalist you don't have a green thumb that also prevents you from having to take care of plants indoors and you can just use the one outdoors as a part of your interior decor. Especially if you're into the modern organic trend right now, this is a great way to have almost a, a seamless transition from the outdoors to the indoors. Start using your windows and your greenery as the focal point in your room instead of artwork or mirrors or pieces of furniture. It's really gonna take you a long way and I think it really does so in Kim Kardashian's home. You will notice that art again is a recent addition, but the windows, the windows really take your breath away. They show you this beautiful garden outside, this beautiful greenery that I think makes a more sterile space feel like home and so that's something you should do as well if you're feeling like your space may be a little bit sterile and you want it to feel more homey but you don't want to add too many other things The next takeaway from Kim Kardashian's home is that scale does matter. So if you have all the money in the world or you don't have any money, scale still matters. You still have to take that into consideration. Something something you see in celebrity homes all of the time is that they will get the largest furniture possible. They'll just get the largest thing out there to say, hey, I can buy this, I can afford this. But that's not what she does. She chooses furniture that makes sense for the size of the room, right? She chooses furniture that's sized correctly. She doesn't have a mega sofa just to show that she can afford the mega sofa. She'll have a two-seater or 
where she'll have a really nice sitting area that has two chairs and a sofa and a coffee table like everyone else's home. When we're looking at stores like Restoration Hardware and other luxury stores, they're making really, really large furniture and buying the furniture is kind of part of the status symbol, right? And so we get caught up in that and then everything is oversized and sure it has the brand name, but it still doesn't look luxurious. It just looks cluttered, right? So she's actually scaled things beautifully. Her rugs are scaled correctly to her sofas. Um, in her, you know, dining area, they have a table and the right amount of chairs, but not all of the chairs are always around the dining table. They sit on the wall so that the chair, so that the dining table doesn't look super cluttered. All of these interior design basics that we have to apply in our homes also apply to celebrity homes. And a lot of celebrities do not adhere to them, but I noticed that Kim Kardashian really, truly does. Even with like her art height. So her art is definitely on the smaller sides, but it's scaled correctly to most of her fireplaces and it's at the right height. She doesn't have it touching the ceiling or touching the floor, right? We're still thinking about these interior design basics. And I think that sometimes when we get a little bit more money, we're like, we can do whatever we want. Sure, of course you can do whatever you want. It's your home, right? But if we want things to look aesthetically pleasing, we still have to remember these basics and we really, really have to remember scale. The final takeaway from Kim Kardashian's house is that you need to get organized before designing a luxury space. So again, I believe your house can look luxurious even if you are not breaking the bank to achieve it. So Kim Kardashian has five refrigerators. I do not expect you to have five refrigerators. I don't even know if you, like, I can't even imagine that electricity bill, but I want you to make sure that you are organized and that you have space to organize your things before you design your space. So a lot of people now they're into new construction. So you actually have a lot of say in what your home's gonna look like. Please, please don't put in open shelves if you use every single inch of your pantry space, right? Because maybe you won't have enough space in your pantry proper and you need those upper cabinets for those things. Don't choose something in terms of design that looks good but is not practical and functional for you. And of course, like you're not gonna have five refrigerators, you're not gonna have any as many pantries as Kim Kardashian, but I think the level of thought that went into it is something that I want you to take away from the situation. Think about it when you are designing so that if you want your space to be completely minimal, if you want your open shelves to look like Kim Kardashian's, those bowls that are perfectly stacked there, they look pristine, it looks like they never ever Ever, ever touch them you need to make sure that you have the ample systems in, in place elsewhere in your home to keep that working because it doesn't matter if your home looks like that for one minute if the second you actually step foot in the house and start living in it it never looks like that again then there's absolutely no point so get organized go read the home edits book go to the container store go to Walmart go to Target and get the things that you need to get organized so that your home can actually look the way you want it to look okay you guys that's it for today's video those were nine interior design takeaways from Kim Kardashian's mansion. Of course, she has a lot of money, but it's not really about the money. It's about the interior design fundamentals that went into crafting that space. And if you apply any of them that we shared today, I promise you your house is going to look so sophisticated. If you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and check me out on Instagram. And until next time, have a beautiful day.